Hello and welcome to the conclusion of the Preserve Championship. We have got round three front nine coverage from the fourth stop of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. This coverage is brought to you by Airborne and Prodigy Disc. We've got Big Barry commentary. Jeremy Colling, joined by Paul Yildur. Yes, sir. Can't wait to watch the action. That's a nice picture of Calvin Einberg right yeah, there. Yeah, he is just looking slightly off to the camera just to confuse you and frustrate you. Oh, is there a magic trick coming? No, just holding a bottle. Nico LaCastro, back-to-back 15 under rounds. He is playing phenomenal disc golf. Eagle McMahon, he is four strokes back, but obviously in striking distance with a hot round today. We have seen some smoking rounds so far in this event. And obviously the ever so entertaining Simon with a successful triple flip around the hand. He is also four back. Let's get straight to the action here. Slightly windier day. Day three. Hole one is a par four, 667 feet. Big boom and drive off the fairway. You want to go left just to kind of cut off a little bit extra distance, but if you go too far left into the high grass, you'll be out of bounds. Yeah, it was nice to have that wind up for the final round, especially on this hole right to left. It really made you think about it finally just a little bit. You had to make sure not to get the nose up, otherwise you can easily flail into that out of bounds left. From Safety Harbor, Florida, Kelvin Heinberg. And I got a disc correction. I've been calling some of Calvin's disc the Halo Destroyers. He's been throwing the uh, Signature Series Swirly Star Calvin Heinberg Destroyers all weekend. And that's about as much Anheuser as you're going to see from Calvin as he just normally likes to rip it flat. If anything, a little bit of Heiser. You're going to see a lot of shots like that in this last round. Yeah, you could see how he really wanted to try to hug that right side. Mm -hmm. shot 15 down both days at 30 under total from St. Louis, Missouri, Nico LaCastro. Nico LaCastro, crafty veteran, a unique style of play. Throws a disc unlike any other player on tour, but utilizes it so well. If you've watched the first two rounds of coverage, well, actually just round two. We didn't see him in the first round, but he really likes to force over. Big distance driver. There he is. That's a signature throw. Yeah. Down the right side of the fairway. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. This whole card, you're in for a treat, but this guy has been throwing some of the craziest rollers that I've seen, and then not don't get to, uh, a chance to see that on a ton of courses. So I'm super excited to see the final round from Boulder, Colorado's Eagle McMahon. A little extra commentary from the announcer. And he, Eagle definitely has been throwing some great shots. We saw some just absolute highlight rollers in the first round. That basket you see behind Eagle right now is hole four. And that is where he rolled out of bounds long and came back in at 701 feet off the tee. It's just a, it's a different kind of weapon. And that arm speed, just that arm, just after he releases the disc, obviously not his best effort there turned over, but his back swing is so quick to get behind him. Yeah, that's going to be the first kind of tricky upshot that we've seen on this whole. The players so far have had just mm -hmm. overstable putter coming into the green. I'm kind of curious what he's got from there. Simon Lazat. You can see Simon is actually wearing that brace on his right on his right arm, and that's actually because he He's been kind of sore, so he's been tending to shy away from the sidearm. Right. And that is a great drive, pushing that left side of the fairway. That'll be a very short approach for Simon. Probably just out of jump putt range, but he is really deadly from 150 feet and in with that jump putt because he is so controlled with the big nose-up spin. And Eagle having to go with a big forehand. Now, this is tricky because that pine tree does come into play. Yes, it does. Yeah. That'll be a long putt for Eagle on the first hole. 
the third easiest hole of the day coming in at an average of 3.52. With all this firepower on the lead card, you know it's gonna take a hot round. Even with a four stroke cushion that Calvin and Nico have on second place or third place, conservative round is not going to be enough this is going to be a sprint all the way through of birdies did the math earlier today and so far in the first two rounds 25 percent of the scores 207 scores have been turned in 25 percent of them have been double digits below par or better that's absolutely crazy it's going to take my prediction is anywhere between 12 and 14 under for anyone on this lead card to make a good bid for this title. And great approach shots from Nico, Calvin, and Simon. Eagle, the only one with a bit of work left. And just like that, he is in the basket from 40 feet. He's got his feature card shorts on. He's got his feature card shirt on. He's ready to bring the action. Calvin up and in. Nico with the chalk ha chalky hands right there. He's been really utilizing that this weekend from the hum humidity. I see a lot of people with that same kind of. Oh. oh no. And a bit nervy. One of the first putting errors we've seen from Nico. Yeah, and that's not a great way to start. He's going to really mm -hmm. have to dig deep to calm those nerves because you miss any short putts on this course and you're going to get lapped in a hurry. Mm hmm. And we got to give a quick shout out to Colton Montgomery, who started his round off with a big eagle two on the first. Great way to start his round and the only eagle of the week on hole two or on hole one. On to hole two, par three, 284 feet. Just that gap right there off to the left is the biggest bunker um, in the fairway that you have to miss. Aside from slightly small gap right off the tee. Going to be a putter for all these guys. I was curious, did you throw a sidearm on this? Every round. Yes. Did it work? Yes. No, it didn't. Uh -uh. <laughs> I almost, I, yeah, let's get to these guys. It's not important what I almost did. And I, I, did that go through? Yeah, that was really, really, really fortunate. He mm. actually missed the gap and wow. it just went between those two trees on the left, which is about a disc. Yeah, width. a disc and a half? Yeah, maybe. Wow. Really fortunate break for Calvin after taking one stroke from Nico on the starting hole. Eagle putting a little bit of flex. This looks really great. And that's how you draw it up. It really isn't a good forehand hole, <laughs> going back to it. <laughs> it really is just a putter or a mid-range. Ooh. That gap can be intimidating, even these guys right here, as you can see. Calvin was lucky to get through, Simon not so much. And even though this is just hold two, I feel like this is a must get for Nico, especially after the short miss on one, just to kind of get back on that birdie train. And he does barely miss the tree. That He's looks pretty good. Calling going in, but that'll be good enough. That'll give him another putt from the same range, see if he can make the adjustment. Good approach from Simon. And Eagle off to a birdie birdie star.
Nico sticking with the spin putt from there, and the wind is not that bad in the woods. It is a little breezier. It's the first time of the weekend that's actually been blowing at all. But um, I'm surprised to not see him go with that push putt that he's putted with for pretty much his entire career. Right. Going back and forth can be tricky sometimes if you're in between deciding what you want to do. But seeing him commit to the spin putt so far through the first two holes kind of gives me the indication he might try to go through that the whole round. I actually believe it was a it was a push putt miss on the first hole. Oh. And then he switched it to okay. the spin putt right there. Okay. Well, that's something to keep an eye on as we go to hole three, par three, 426 feet. Just that um, huge fairway, but really, if you're going to go with anything that takes up more left to right space than a mid-range or a fairway driver, you really have to push that right side all the way down in order to not skip down the hill to the left. you got to think it's quite fascinating to think about the mental struggles these guys are going to have this round. If you miss one hole, think about it, mm -hmm. one hole, the previous round, that was it. That's all you could miss mm -hmm. with Calvin coming in at 17 under par. So that can weigh heavily on you, just one miss. And Calvin already off to the birdie birdie start and looking to add another one with that big skip down the hill. That'll leave him a uh, circle's edge putt. Good drive. We've been, just Eagle's going to go with a casual two step mid range. Now, this was playing with a pretty stiff tailwind. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't need the help because we saw him park it in, hole, in round one. But now he's got a tailwind, so he'll even go less percentage than before. Yeah, maybe a little bit lower. Just so That much. needs to get down. He's gone too far? I think he just... Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that, that turn, that was great. So much touch and control from that distance with a mid-range. It's... Right, and then in the previous round, awesome. Nico wasn't able to flex this enough. Let's see if he can get the Anheuser required. Oh. Overflex. Pushing that f edge, but does not get back in time. But you know what? That was the mistake to make. He did not go out of bounds. He did, he's not going to have to. Most likely, he's not going to be facing a bogey here on hole three. But with Calvin up there putting for a birdie, he could potentially be in trouble of losing two strokes in just the first three holes. Once again, Simon throwing that disc to perfection. He is loving that thing. He showed me what it was last week. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's... It's a good one. It's a good one. And Nico got a good break there. I thought he was in the wood line, but I guess he just barely got out, was able to jump putt under the basket. Big opportunity here for Calvin. And that was just high out of his hand the whole way. Big opportunity for Eagle. And for the first time in the round, he has made a stroke up on the leaders. So birdies for the chasers of Simon and Eagle and Calvin and Nico settling for the par. And one down through three through those holes, it's not the worst. It doesn't feel necessarily the wor like horrible, but when you're playing with these guys right here, you, you, you're just gonna have to be on point the whole time. You have to be sharp, you have to be focused. Nico needs to turn things around him with a, bo a birdie here could get things going for him again. Right, that's why I was mentioning the mental struggles they're probably going through and these guys, you know, are competing for the championship. It's going to be up to them to stay confident, which is extremely tough to do, especially when people around you are birdieing and you're missing. Excited to see Eagle. He's going roller again. Did he get the angle right this time? Uh, yeah, not quite as good as the first time we saw him. And that needs to sit. Is there OB right? There is. Oh, wow. 
Okay. So in there you you can see the the leaves blowing there in the wind. And maybe that got played some tricks on a uh, eagle's roller. Yeah, there is a a path that goes all the way down on the right side, and if it okay. gets away from you, kind of right at that green, or even at where the basket is about 35 to the right, it can easily trickle out of bounds. And Simon kind of throws his hands up and says, what am I supposed to do? I think that's what you're supposed to do. But that's also kind of what I'm sure Kale LaVisca was envisioning from these players a little bit more than he's seen so far this week with players not really having to make any tough decisions. The wind hasn't been blown yet. Right. Now it was it was a nice change of change of pace during mm -hmm. this round to have a little extra factor in there, along with obviously the final round always being the toughest round to score on, because everybody's jockeying for their position. But this is unleashed. Oh wow! And I said Calvin doesn't throw Anheuser very often, but when he does, he does things like this, <laughs> almost clearing the entire green huge shot that's a statement throw from Calvin Heimberg every bit of 600 feet just a short jump putt left that's a great line Nico pushing the back edge of that gap keeping the disc turning And you can see Nico just threw a great shot. He's short of the green, and Calvin <laughs> almost cleared the green. He got all of it, plus the yeah. extra height. <laughs> the wind pushed it. Are you talking about Calvin's extra height? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he threw that one very well. Oh, what a beautiful shot from Simon, I just think, touching the top of the hill. I think that's going to be a little short, don't okay. you? Okay. Yeah, it, I thought it cleared the hill, but, yeah, just at the very end, it caught the back edge of the putter. That's more like it right there. Oh, oh uh oh wow. Iron Branch right there holding that one back. And you can see Calvin's just to the right of it from our perspective. Cool. Or not Calvin, sorry. Simon. That was so easy. <laughs> yeah. An eagle has a putt <laughs> for the birdie save. And he's just trying to pitch one around. Wow. That was a creative run. How can you putt that high from that far and still be accurate in the wind? Don't know. That's, don't, I don't have that skill. That is really creative. Mmm, Simon. He'll be taking another par here on hole four. You go going back to the push putt. Wow. Great putt. That'll calm your nerves going into these future uh, holes, or these, these upcoming holes. They are in the future right now. They are, yep. <laughs> But these upcoming holes, definitely making a big putt like that, it's gonna make a big difference for him. And gotta give a quick shout out to the second Eagle of the weekend on hole four, Jake Schlagek. I don't know if I said that <laughs> right, man. I'm looking at this last name and I said, please just try. Got a two, hole four. Awesome, good for you, buddy. Hole five, par four, 910 feet. One of the longest par fours you're gonna play. Big tee shot. The only thing you have to do for these guys who can throw so far is make sure you don't overturn your drive off to the right. Keeping it straight is ideal. If it hazards a little bit, that's fine too. But the only way you really can't get to the pin is if you go right. Don't do that either though. Wow. It, wow. Calvin, has he just gone OB? Yes. I didn't even know that out of bounds came into play on this one that was so there is a right to left wind here pretty heavy oh, too wow. so 
it, it definitely makes it extremely difficult. And that is going to be so far away. That I, I mean, I know I don't want to discount how far Calvin can throw, but from that high grass, from the other side of the rough, he's looking at 650 to the pin maybe. And that'll be just to save a par. Calvin is in a very big – what am I trying to say? He's in danger of bogeying. He's in trouble. He is in trouble. And Eagle is going with the roller, but I don't know if he likes the angle. And that is in a bad spot as well. Going to make the gallery move. I honestly don't think that where Calvin is, the distance is going to be as much of an issue as the tree line. Where he gets to take his meter from that out of bounds mm -hmm. is going to play a big role in whether he can get out and get up and down. And this is perfect. Yeah, this is exactly what you're looking for. Wow. That's the best drive we've seen so far this weekend on this one. This is going to take something special to get back in position to save the par. Oh, no, he's fine right there, isn't he? Oh, not when you do that. And the wind just bouncing the disc up and down, skipping through the tree, but still outside circle two. That would have got there easily, too. That's crazy to say, because that is so far away. Nico never got this one turning over to the right with a big window of opportunity with Calvin's misstep. How far is Eagle here? It's hard to say. I mean, lining up a forehand, we saw him do it the first round, but he had a good roller getting around the corner. Oh, wow. He might just be conceding. I I don't know. He can throw the disc so far, though. Wow. I mean, that's almost pin high in two with a bad roller into standstill sidearm. And now Simon has a, an opportunity to gain mm -hmm. one on everybody, at and, least one. And perhaps two on Calvin. You can see the wind just doing whatever it wants with that disc. Yeah, and Simon's a little bit short and a little bit left. And you can see what just a little wind can do to this course. And it's no longer a you have to birdie every hole mm -hmm. game. It's it, You have to throw really good shots and stay in position. As we saw Eagle go out of bounds on the last hole mm -hmm. and then Calvin go out of bounds on this hole. There was nobody going out of bounds in the first right. couple rounds That's anywhere. Just, well, I don't, we didn't see it really at all. This would go a long way if some, one of these guys could somehow wow. connect from long range. Mm, that was flirting with a huge putt for Eagle. That would have been some kind of crazy birdie on this one. Calvin just putting that one under the pin. Like you said, here's a big opportunity for Simon. Yeah, he knew it. Great, confident stroke. Already reaching for the mini. That was a confident stroke mm -hmm. right there. That was beautiful. And just like that, he is going to be two back of Calvin and still three back of Nico as Nico has, well, actually, no, that will be, I don't know what's going on, man. Okay, he's still three back of Calvin. But two-stroke swing in his favor. He gets him back into the action. There's still so much golf to be played here as we go to hole six. 
par 3 414 feet across the water this hole has been getting decimated by the pro field over 50 percent birdie rate for the weekend for this disc golf pro tour event really nothing to watch out for i mean just clear the water yeah and, and it's actually interesting that the water does play a factor like you do juice it to make mm -hmm. sure that you get over I, I don't care who you are you're you're definitely thinking about it and this is one that i was thinking early on the event we could definitely see a hole in one of this right the play is a big hyzer there's a backstop behind the pin you give it a full throw maybe it lifts up a little bit in the basket we've actually seen nico ace a shot like this at maple hill just a little bit shorter That's going to be a little bit short, and obviously Simon's off right. Neither one of those drives are exactly what the player we're looking for. Eagle going FD3. I like how he's taking his time going through his routine. Hammering low, stable, looking for a skip and nothing. Very surprising action for both Nico and Eagle's drives. The grass just really ate those Heiser skip shots up. And I'm just going to say it. There is no way Calvin does not put this in the circle after watching those three people do the same exact thing. He has to make the correction and just... I think he's going to absolutely base this. And he does. And needs to stay. No. Wow. And that gets away from him. And Hardest hole in the world? I guess so. I mean, the the difference really They just isn't. all make it. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised, but. Very surprising. They do have their work cut out for them. Each player is sitting in circle two. Eagle up first. I thought for sure Calvin was going to. One thing Eagle is so good at is getting that height right. That was a perfectly released putt, just a little bit right, but the height was ideal. Nico with the step. <laughs> Waving bye-bye to it. <laughs> God, he is so silly sometimes. I love it. Calvin, please birdie. At least birdie for me. Yeah, this is this is Julebar's reputation online. Oh, wow. And that's why I am a part-time commentator. <laughs> you do a great job, buddy. <laughs> But that was a situation where he should have definitely gone to school with those lines that he saw from Nico and Eagle. And now, Simon, another chance. And look at this. A little stab putt. I oh, love wow. that. I've been there. That is not an easy putt. Ooh, here we go. And now you can see how he made it through the little sliver there. And I think just as impressive that he made the putt as he, it is what as it is as I get caught up again my words that he didn't hit a leaf he didn't hit anything coming through that gap there's just tons of things in the way and sometimes when a putt is framed up like that for a player especially with Simon's trick shot abilities it really kind of makes the putt easier in a way there's nothing easy about that yeah, putt. I will. but I do get what you're saying yes when you, if it makes you commit a little harder to a very small window when you think about the creativity that you have to use to make that putt it already shapes the shot for you out of your hand. All you got to do is just get it through that hole that you're looking at. Simon's within two. That was a beautiful putt, back-to-back -back holes. And certainly just trailing by two, that momentum is firmly in, on his... I'm just done. You, go ahead. Hole seven. Par three, 294 feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're doing great, man. Go for it. See this stump right in the middle of the fairway? Miss if that. you miss that, you're golden. Yeah. Now, the only thing that I've noticed in the last couple rounds is people missing left and right. And if that happens, you kick to either side, scrambling will be an issue. So just focus, aim for that little stump, and hope you're not that good. <clears throat> and Simon's going to be going with, a, I believe, a fairway driver. The 
bit of a backstop. So if you juice the drive too far, wow. The distance control with the, the fairway driver, that was impressive. Getting through the gap, not going too far. Sneeko's smiling right now because it's so easy for him. <laughs> yep. That is perfect. I mean, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Still good. I mean, that's inside the circle. Well, inside mm -hmm. the circle. As you alluded to earlier, the humidity has been an issue all weekend. Players go into their whale sacks or birdie bags, whatever they can do to get a good grip on the disc. Yeah, it's been an absolute steamer. Uh-oh. Too good. Yeah, there's the stump. You think he was aiming for the stump? No. I mean, you trying to aim at something and missing it, I think is some of the worst advice. So you silly. You're right. People to... <laughs> Because whenever I aim at something that I don't want to hit, that's hit the only it, yeah. time I'm ever brilliantly accurate, and I always hit it. So I just try to hit a gap. That's always hard enough. <laughs> Pushing the height, probably some oh, good, the, maybe, no, not good leaves. The, the first leaf was fine. The second one seemed to really knock the Calvin's drive down, and that's going to be in layup territory most likely. That was a run. Yes. Wow. A really good run at that. No kidding. And it stayed, re you know, really close. Mm-hmm. Calvin just laying up, looks like. Another opportunity for Simon to get another back. Well, not... On Calvin. On Calvin, yeah. But Calvin and Nico are tied, so Nico has an opportunity to gain a stroke... Just the co-leader. Mm. He, he almost swung the basket. <laughs> <laughs> like. I thought he was about to just punch it. <laughs> he just swings it. Good luck with that one, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> this birdie, birdie, birdie stretch for Simon has gained him four strokes on Calvin and three strokes on Nico. And just like that. And you wouldn't think that with those two holes that he would, mm -hmm. with those three holes that he would be getting that many. I'm sure, especially with the distance that all these guys have, you know, hole five, I wouldn't mm -hmm. think would play that difficult. Yeah, that was a definitely But that's surprising. disc golf. For this, for this card to come in at even par on five was, was totally yeah. shocking. I was kind of surprised to see Calvin putt with the basket still swinging a little bit. I thought that he would have waited. He just can't take an op uh, a risk like that in that situation that maybe just swings a little bit and your disc falls out. That would be an inexcusable mistake. We are on hole eight, playing with a little bit of tailwind, par five, 1,110 feet. A big booming Anheuser or a flip up down the middle are two great drive options. And then you're kind of left with a blind approach on the second shot where you have to make a decision how close you want to push that right tree line. Simon going hugest roller I've ever seen in my life. This needs to sit. This could curl. Yeah, it's curling right, but good. So far up the fairway that if he wants to go roller again, he could put himself in position for perhaps an eagle three. We haven't seen zero eagles on hole eight thus far. Nico going big booming Anheuser. I like this angle. That is some good commitment right there. Wow. That's a distance line. When you go to like mm -hmm. the desert and you're mm -hmm. trying to break records or or just try to get your furthest distance, that's the mm -hmm. kind of that's the kind of shot you have to throw. And he does it just perfectly right there. And he does it on the golf course, which is 
like you said, just incredible commitment. Eagle looking like he is going to try that roller line as well. Even on a eagle on a on a par streak right now, he needs to get things going. Is that gonna have enough? I don't think so. I think he knew it out of his hand. I, I think that was him clapping. It's still a big drive, and that's in a good position, honestly. The only problem is that your ramp's a little bit slow with that high grass, but that's still 450, 500 down the fairway. We're just off to the left side, but really not in much danger. Calvin says, I'll go 500 a different way. <laughs> just four feet off the ground. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I saw a lot of people going roller as first and second shot, mm -hmm. but I also saw a lot of mistakes with them doing that as well. So it is not just, you know, throw roller, no problem. Oh, and this is in danger of going out of bounds left. Needs to check up. Okay, that's fine. It's a little bit of a bulge out to the left side of the fairway that sticks out just enough. For You go going roller. Uh oh. Nope. And there is out of bounds. And just like that is tournament's over. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> That's what it looked like. <laughs> oh. He is so animated. It is it is really quite fun to watch. Eagle making sure he does not make the mistake of going out of bounds left. And he's up in circle two. I don't care how far you are in the woods. Being in circle two after two shots is, uh, you'll take it. And look at this. Simon just playing a pitch shot around the corner you think he's just trying to throw it to that one spot that he did yesterday <laughs> he's <laughs> like if i just throw it right there easy put hey, i wish i knew what he said <laughs> oh this is perfect Perfect. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure which uh, direction the camera was pointed there. I thought that was really high and early right, but nope, that was just exactly what he was looking for. Same disc that he did throw it in yeah. with on the previous round. But a different line. He's going down the middle. It's so controlled. Yeah, I, I am very jealous of that shot right there. That mm -hmm. is one that... I, I can't land a disc that soft from that distance unless I throw a sidearm. So when I see people like Nico or Simon throw that shot, I always think, man, that it's very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Certainly an impressive skill that they utilize so well and so often. And Nico, speaking of skills, has been really putting on a sidearm showcase. Whenever he goes to it, he's been uh, very reliable with it. But that's going to be for par. So, yeah. Another stroke given back to Simon. Ooh. Eagle trying to make something work, but that'll give him uh, his first birdie since hole three. Nico in for the par. And we gotta give a shout out because this is something special. Ben Calloway, Ricky, your boy Wysocki, and Jake Hebenheimer. All threed. A hole eight. A hole has not been threed all week yet. And that's an incredible accomplishment. This is a big hole. Yeah, I was playing practice round and we had a little headwind and I thought to myself, well, nobody's gonna eagle this. And as soon as I thought that, I said, wait, don't think that. 
on to hole nine, par three, 380 feet, probably closer to 420 feet. And then playing even further than that because it plays uphill. This one's difficult to land one close. That green is so fast there. There is a bunker behind and to the right of the pin. That's a great place for your disc to land, but if you're putting short of the green, you can very easily putt OB, so it is a very scary green to attack. Yeah, every round I tried to throw it in the bunker, but instead it ended up very short, and I s noticed mm. that that has actually been something that a lot of the competitors have been doing. Well, okay, Simon somehow threw a shank off right and <laughs> got away with it. Yeah, that's great. Pin high right, right there in the bunker, putting uphill. And he is making a charge right now. One stroke back of Calvin after he retook re the lead on hole eight with the birdie. Right. Well, I guess my point was it plays a lot further than you think. It certainly does. And I'm pretty sure Eagle just threw a mid-range there. Calvin trying to get a grip. Calvin going super wide as well. Oh, wow. Sit down. Yeah. That is a great drive. Let's see that again. Pushing that one so wide and high and letting the disc just knife down and take all the speed away right there. So you can see it even left a little bit of a divot. Three great drives so far here on the difficult par three, hole nine. And this is more of the traditional play. Mm -hmm. kind of skipping it up there and then it really kind of filters over to that left side of the green but it leaves you a very stressful putt as you were talking about with the out of bounds right behind there that'll be 30 feet slight breeze right to left this would do wonders for his confidence no kidding head into the back nine can Nika make this oh my oh. god <laughs> 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 Not exactly the most convincing putt, but it's in the basket. He gave it a thumbs up, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's always got a fun hand signal. <laughs> Simon is on fire, folks. Seven down to the front nine, firing on all cylinders. He is right there in the mix. Eagle in, and with Calvin just a short putt away, we are looking like we are going to have a star frame on hole nine. That'll be 25 bucks to charity. And let's take a look at that front nine as Calvin Heimberg Maintains the one-stroke lead over Simon Lazat and Nicola Castro. Jordan Castro jumping up in the mix with mm -hmm. a seven-down front nine as well. And he shot a hot back nine on round two, going ten down in the final nine holes. So he is playing great disc golf right now. We are certainly going to have a photo line finish as we draw to the final nine holes of the Absolutely. Preserve Championship. Absolutely.